say, You're not my real dad. <laughs> You're not my real dad. You, Hamlet, Prince of all Denmark, are now sitting in your bedroom and playing solitaire for hours and hours and hours and hours, which is a pretty colossally useless waste of your time, especially since you keep cheating. A five goes on top of a three? Hamlet, really? Anyway. I was walking in a garden, and you know how gardens are really boring, right? You nod. They're boring, <laughs> They're boring even, for for pe like even for people who like them. Exactly, says Ghost Dad. <laughs> well, it was so boring I fell asleep. And while I was sleeping, he poured poison in my ear. I didn't know poisons worked that way, you say. <laughs> That's what I said. Welcome back, friends, family, and anyone who found this little indie channel from the recommended section. My name is Mikey, this is Nindy Nexus, and today we're uh, taking a little bit of a different route, a different path, if you will, and getting into a special one. But before I let you know what the name of the game is, let's talk a little bit about Second Person Perspective. Now this game that I'm going to be playing is in second person perspective and it's not something you see too often in games unless you tend to play a specific type of genre, usually. And depending on the context, it can mean one of two different things. So first, if we're talking about second person camera perspective, it would essentially be you controlling the character but viewing it through the lens of another. The most common and probably infamous of these examples would be Super Mario 64, which technically you would think is maybe third person or something, but if you remember, it is all being filmed through Lakitu's camera, which makes it a second person. But the other context and the context that is relevant to the game that I'm going to play is when you're playing a choose your own adventure game which basically means you are reading what's going on. However, you are the protagonist. Whatever you choose to do is what happens in the story. And that's what I've always liked about Choose Your Own Adventure games is that while you're reading an entertaining story, you are also a part of this story, controlling the narrative in a sense, and ultimately being the hero. That context out of the way, let's jump into the game. The game that I'll be playing today is called To Be or Not To Be. Yep, that is the question. To be or not to be is $6.99 on the North American eShop. It was just released January 12th, 2022. It is a one-player adventure role-playing education and study game, hence why you may have just learned a little something. It was published by Tin Man Games, developed by the same Tin Man Games, who also have a bunch of other great Choose Your Own Adventure stories on the eShop. Check those out. The game file size for this one is 439 MB. Support languages include English. It's rated teen for blood, violence, use of alcohol, suggestive themes, and language? What kind of game is this? Well, considering the fact that we're going to be guiding Hamlet, Ophelia, and Hamlet Sr. to hilarious deaths, at least based on the description, I can see that being very fitting. Here we go, Tin Man Games presents. Tap anywhere or press A to continue the story. With the assistance of Screen Australia. Would you like to enable narration? That would be pretty cool. I was going to choose to narrate it myself, but maybe we can have a little bit of both. Let's uh, turn it on and see what happens. Okay, you can toggle it from the options. Achievements and art still unlock while narration is enabled. But notifications will not be displayed. Thanks. To be or not to be. William Shakespeare, 1564 AD to whenever he died, was well known for borrowing from existing literature when writing. <laughs> whenever he died, so that's kind Romeo of funny and pretty much uh, that they threw that in Arthur there because actually, the yeah, William Shakespeare's death is a little bit unknown. Didn't even change the names, uh, at least uh, his recent not only how it happened necessarily, but um, the famed when William it Shakespeare happened. Presents so, Hamlet little trivia was there. Wholesale from the volume you are about to enjoy, to be or not to be. To Be or Not To Be is both the earliest recorded example of the books as game genre, as well as the first instance ever in the then newish English language that was kicking around of an adventure being chosen by you, the reader. 
we've gone ahead and added illustrations. Plus, we've taken the liberty of marking with tiny York skulls the choices Shakespeare himself made when he plagiarized his book back in olden times. <laughs> They're there in case you wish to put yourself in Shakespeare's shoes. Reading this book as he did, stealing plot elements wholesale, and classing up the language as he, slash you, went, slash go. However, that is not the only way to read this book. Nice. Feel free to explore your other options as each time you read this book, you can go on a different adventure, assuming you don't read the book like three quadrillion times, at which point the adventures will start to repeat, and they'll probably seem pretty familiar long before then anyway. I mean, if now, you don't read it three quadrillion times, are you really even playing to choose your own adventure? Nobody knew velociraptors were even a thing. Steal yourself to experience the magic of Shakespeare as it was meant to be experienced, in a non-deterministic narrative structure, where you end up thinking maybe you made a wrong decision, so you mark the pages you were just on, so you can always go back and make a different choice if you die for some dumb reason. Never. To be or not to be, that is the adventure. Mm, there it is, folks. Choose we found character. it. To be or not to be. Five Man, minutes in. What if I just read the acknowledgments instead? You can't tell me what to do, smart guy. I'm just going to keep reading. Um, I'm going to choose my character. You have just been born. Congratulations. Good work on that thing. Now, surprise. Babies are boring, so we're going to jump ahead in time whoa, to a whoa, point where whoa. you're an adult. And you've already lived a bunch <laughs> of your life. But I promise most I'm of glad you think babies are born, but I got one on the way pretty soon. And, lot, and uh, I'm, I'm and freaking out a little bit. Tears were shed, make -outs were totally <laughs> I guess that's had, a... Et cetera. It was a bunch of high school The first stuff. real public acknowledgement, at least awesome in a video stuff. anyway, so... Starts now. Surprise! So, let's begin, my friend. Um, remind me again who you are. Are you... Ophelia? She's an awesome lady in her late 20s with a calm, competent, and resourceful demeanor. She's got a plus one bonus to science, but she's also got a minus one weakness against water. So, so heads up. Heads up. Hamlet? Um... He's an emo teen in his early 30s. Also, he's, yeah, a prince he's an emo teen in his Hamlet early 30s. Has a plus one resistance to magic, but there's no That's magic in this funny. adventure, so this never gets mentioned again as of right now. <laughs> Hamlet Sr.? He's the king of Denmark, 50 years old. He's super good at fighting and leading men into battle and naps. Let's say plus one to each? Into battle one. and naps. Bottom line, he's an unstoppable machine of death, and should you choose to be him, you may experience kingly glory. You may experience Play kingly glory. I'm feeling like an emo 30 year old Play right now, Hamlet. so I'm thinking Hamlet. Play as Hamlet Sr. That's the route Shakespeare went. Look at me, let's go. You are Hamlet. You're 30 years old and you're back living at home, but it's okay because your home is a castle. That's right, ladies. You're a prince. Mm -hmm. Things have been rough lately. You had been trying to focus on your studies at Wittenberg University, where you and your bros, Horatio Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, all hang out. But you were called home because your father died. Then, your dead dad's brother, Claudius, married your mom, Gertrude, two weeks later. Yep. Yep. It's made you kind of upset. You raised I'm pretty to her, but uh, impressed that this has full... You feel narration it. full uh right now you're in the voice audience acting. that's pretty awesome father's castle here in and the writing Denmark. so far is pretty good King and Claudius actually is here addressing his court larides and polonius are here too larides is kind of a jerk and polonius is his father polonius is also the father of ophelia whom you're totally sweet on she's not here, she's though. Not here though <laughs> who knows what adventure she's having as we speak while you're stuck in this drafty castle room listening to other people I was going to wait for it to theory. stop before I say something. Speaking of speaking, just now Larity says something about how now that Claudius is king and he's attended the coronation, is it okay for him to go back to France? Claudius says, Sure. Wait a minute. <laughs> you sure. have to leave too and go back to school, away from this weird incesty thing your mother's gotten herself into. <laughs> it's so gross and weird. Yeah, it seemed to happen a, <laughs> happen a lot back Claudius then. Ask Claudius for permission to go back to school. Hold your tongue and just wait around. All right, so what I was gonna say is that uh, this game is actually, or, or the I don't know if it's the entire game, but um, anyway, the text here is written by Ryan North, who's a creator of Dinosaur Comics and has written for the comic series Adventure Time and Marvel Comics The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. So that's uh, straight from the description of the game, but just so you know, we're not dealing with uh, an unknown name writing for the game here, so um, got some high expectations. All right, let's see. Ask Claudius for permission to go back to school. Hold your tongue and just wait around. Well, 
I can't do that. Let's go back to school. You hold up your hand and open your mouth, but before you can say anything, Claudius addresses you directly, calling you his son. On the one hand, that's entirely appropriate, especially since he just married your mom like two weeks ago. But on the other hand, he has brought creepy uncle to new heights. <laughs> Points for that, maybe? Insult him under your breath by saying you're more than kin, i.e. you're related more than once now as both father slash son and uncle slash nephew. Yeah, but less than it's kind, getting a little complicated. I.e. this relationship you're in is unnatural. In real life, people think up singers like this on the spot all the time. So this totally makes sense. Say, you're not my real dad. <laughs> you're not my real dad. And he's got video captured. Nice. Insult him under your breath by saying you're more than kin, i.e. you're related more than once now. Okay, okay, this is what he just read. In real life, people think up zingers like this on the spot all the time, so this totally makes sense. Say, so you're not my real dad. I I'm going with that. While you're busy doing that, your friend Horatio bumps into you and tells you, A, he's in town for your dad's funeral slash mom's wedding, and that they serve leftover appetizers from one oh. of the other. <laughs> B, go surreal. C, he's seen one and so have a bunch of other guys. D, it keeps showing up at the same time, and E, he's pretty sure it's the ghost of your dad. Finally, some adventure. <laughs> some, some adventure. Closure. You agree that you'll come with him tonight to see the ghost when it shows up again. It's such an obvious Gotta decision that it, it kind of feels like you don't even have a choice in the matter. Agree to go with Horatio tonight to see the ghost when it shows up again. Yup, you know it. What's better than an emo in a graveyard? Let's go. I'll be there. 11.30 sharp, you say, and Horatio leaves, satisfied. Well, now you have eight hours to blow before it's time to meet ghosts. What do you want to do, Hamlet? Be Ophelia for a while. <laughs> be Ophelia for a while or play solitaire. Hey, that would be actually pretty dope if they had an actual solitaire game here. Uh, I'm going to see you right now. You, Hamlet, Prince of all Denmark, nope. are now sitting in your bedroom and playing solitaire for hours, hours, and hours and hours and hours and hours, which is a pretty colossally useless waste of your time, especially since you keep cheating. A five <laughs> goes on top of a three, Hamlet, really? Anyway, at this point, we're 15 Maybe I don't know in. how to count. Wow, if you're not careful, people might start saying that your tragic flaw is... I don't know. In action. In action. Eventually the sun goes down, and it's almost 11.30, which hopefully you remember as the appointed hour Horatio told you about, wherein a ghost keeps showing up to bother him. Time to go meet that ghost, huh? Yup, let's go meet up meet with up Horatio and bust some, some myths. myths about actual ghosts being real. Let's go. You and Horatio go to where he saw the ghost the first time. Now we play the waiting game, says Horatio. He's interrupted by the sound of trumpets. You want to play some uh, solitaire at, him and raise an eyebrow. at the same time? They make that noise to warn everyone that King Claudius is getting wasted, he says. Those trumpets go off every night around this time. <laughs> he sighs. He's getting wasted. Uh, Denmark, he says. At that exact moment, something insanely crazy happens. What the frig? <laughs> I'll tell frig? you what the frig. A ghost is here. A ghost? Look, ghost. Look, ghost. Listen, fat. Don't freak out, but right now you're staring cold in the face of a g, -g, -g, -g specter You can't even imagine how crazy <laughs> this whole situation is. If you're getting too scared, read this next clause over and over until you're not insane with fear anymore. Everything will be okay. All right, okay. Everything will be okay. This. Everything will be okay. With your Everything last shred will be of sanity, okay. You quickly glance at the ghost, and then you worry that if you stare at the ghost too hard, your brain will realize it's looking at something so insanely impossible that you'll just black out. Anyway, this ghost. You can see through it, but only a little. It's weird. <laughs> and I'll tell you what the frig else. This ghost Somebody does bumped that opacity. Dead, and he's getting closer. Stare at the ghost intently and black out as your mind shuts down. Don't stare at the ghost too intently and try to figure out what it wants. Run away. Hmm. And black out. I don't know if I want to do that. All right. I'm not going to. I'm going to like just kind of from my periffs. You know what I mean? Are you my dad? I mean, my ghost, my dad? ghost dad? You ask the ghost, but it says nothing. Instead, the ghost beckons to you. He clearly wants you to follow him and leave Horatio behind. I don't know. Is this safe? Can ghosts kill people? Can ghosts kill people? You ask Horatio. I don't know, man, but I really don't think you should be alone with that thing, he says, clearly leaving no ball <laughs> untripped in his own freedom. 
Hamlet, man, something is wrong. <laughs> Leaving no of ball untrue. Gotta say, he yells, his quivering finger pointing at the ghost. Well, duh. I'm gonna do it, you say, and you. I'm gonna do it. Follow the ghost into darkness. Go on to say, by that I mean, I'm going to take this last chance to run for it. <laughs> nope, I'm going. I'm going. You follow the ghost into the mist. After walking for what seems I'll like forever, you get tired you of walking. Into the dark. I'm tired of walking, you say. You sit down. Pretty sure I'm done walking. Yeah, yeah, I'm out. The ghost stops and speaks to you for the first time, its voice issuing forth from lungs that no longer breathe air. Hamlet, it is I, your father. Look, I can't stay around here forever, so you need to listen to what I tell you. I didn't die of old age. I did some digging around, and it turns out I was murdered. By Claudius. Dun, dun, dun. You gasped, shocked and enraged, killed by his own brother. He did it while I slept. I was walking in a garden, and you know how gardens are really boring, right? You nod. They're boring, <laughs> They're boring even for, for people who like Even them. for people who like them. Exactly, says Ghost Dad. Well, <laughs> it was so boring I fell asleep. And while I was sleeping, he poured poison in my ear. I didn't know poisons worked that way, you say. <laughs> That's what I said, shouts your dad, throwing his hands above his head in frustration. He starts to pace back and forth. Anyway, the different times I want back you to then. take revenge on him for me. I don't know. Cuss him out or something. Pull out his chair when he's about to sit down. I got you, Dad. Offer him a high five. I mean, ghost Dad. But then when he goes to high five you, pull your hand away and say, Too slow. Or should he offer you a high five, you must leave him hanging. I could murder him, you offer. After oh. all, he is sleeping with Mom. Oh. Your dad stops pacing and stares at you. He's what? Tell him they got married two weeks after the funeral. Tell him, ha ha, you were just kidding. <laughs> ha ha. Nope, I need the strength and the wrath of ghost dead right behind the me. Funeral, and that makes Claudius king now. You explain how maybe it's not technically incest, but the timing alone sure feels squicky. Didn't he ever read the table of kindred and affinity, wherein whosoever are related are forbidden in scripture and our laws to marry together? Asks your dad. Ah, you say. You refer to the document Queen Elizabeth ordered produced, which says a marriage such as this one we're discussing is not just squicky, but a real-life hardcore sin against God. A book which <laughs> later made its squeaky. way into the Book of Common Prayer, itself so influential that we take many phrases such as, till death do us part, and peace in our time from it? The very same, <laughs> That's your the one. Although I can't imagine that in the future, sentiments might change as to whether or not such a marriage between genetically unrelated loving and consenting adults is among the very worst things that is possible for a human being to do that's not necessary for us to discuss right now. <laughs> you agree. Anyway, says your dad. <laughs> Kill Claudius for me. Cool. Moving on. Promise a ghost you'll commit murder. Promise a ghost you'll commit murder in the classiest verse you can come up with. Oof. I like that style, though. I like that style. You clear your throat, <clears> hold <throat> one hand open in the air in front of you, and promise a ghost that you will kill an alive human. This is what you say. Tell me what I say. Yay. From the table of my memory, Ooh. I'll wipe away all trivial fond records, <sighs> all saws of books. All mm. forms, all pressures mm -hmm. past, that youth and observation copied there, and thy commandment all alone shall live, within the book and volume of my brain, Oof. unmixed with baser matter. Get him. Yes, by heaven. Your ghost dad seems pretty cool with that. Ah, you have begun quest to kiss. kill Claudius. It's worth 3,500 experience points. That's a lot. Leave it there and return to Horatio. Throw in a little sexism for good measure. <laughs> just, a, just a little sexism. <laughs> uh, I, I'm curious. I just, I just want to see what he's gonna say. What, what, what's gonna happen? It's, you know, we're, we're playing a, a work of fiction here. Second person, so technically, it's not, it's not me doing it, right? Oh, most pernicious woman! You oh, not pernicious. Insulting not only Queen Gertrude the woman your father adored, loved, and married, but also all women in general. <laughs> Science Corner. Synonyms for pernicious include noxious nice. and pestilent. Science and corner. the word itself suggests that long-term harm comes from being in contact with whatever it's being used to describe. Stay classy, Hamlet. Stay classy. <laughs> Leave it there and return to Horatio. Nice. You walk back to where Horatio is waiting for you. 
Listen, Horatio. Never speak of this whole we totally saw a ghost thing, okay? We gotta keep, We've gotta it, a keep secret. it a secret. That's nah, cool, that's cool you. says Horatio. Got you. No, I'm serious, man, you say, grabbing his shoulders. Some really serious stuff is gonna go down, and I need you to keep this a secret. Swear that you'll never talk about this. I swear, says Horatio. I swear. Swear it, booms your dad's voice out of nowhere. He already did, you shout. <laughs> Horatio looks at you questioning. <laughs> Hamlet, bro, what's this all about? He says. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, you begin. Than are dreamt of in my philosophy, Horatio finishes, annoyed. Fine. Right. Whatever. Okay. Horatio will keep your secret, and you've got a quest from a ghost to fulfill. And at the end, they'll probably give you some cool loot for completing it. Let's go. Maybe? Give me some I loot. Mean, it's possible. Ghost dad anyway, loot. 3,500 experience points. falling down drunk. What now? Say goodbye to Horatio and go kill Claudius. Go home for nappy times. <laughs> go home for nappy times. Well, Claudius is drunk right now. I mean, that might be the opportune time, unless he's got that, like, crazy drunk person strength. I don't know. I mean, that could backfire pretty horribly. Um, nappy times does sound pretty comfy, but... Uh, it is also what Shakespeare did, and um, Shakespeare was also kind of a drunk, I think. So let, let's see what happens if we go kill Claudius now. You wait until it's I'm, 2 a.m. I'm probably gonna die, but to let's just see. Claudius's room and give him the old stabby stab. But on your way there, you find him passed out in the hallway. There's a bottle of booze in his hand. He really is a cartoon drunk. This is gonna be real easy. You hold your hand over his mouth so he can't scream Ooh, and slit his throat. He's dead within a minute. minute. Ta-da! You leave quietly, making sure not to be seen, and head down to the shore to wash your blood-soaked hands and your blood-soaked clothes. The ocean water cleans off the blood quickly, which is great because you heard it was hard to get out damn blood spots. Turns out, nope, it's actually really easy. You're glad you stayed cool and rational and didn't freak out at all during this process. Good job, champ. You walk <laughs> home job, in your champ. wet clothes, change into adorable pajamas, get into bed and fall asleep. Content in the knowledge that you were right to murder a dude, and that you even had supernatural forces on your side, your dreams are generally peaceful. There's some sex stuff in there too, but whatever man, it happens. Don't even worry about it, it's honestly not a big deal. In the morning, you act super surprised that Claudius got killed year old, to death. No, no big deal. What? You say, waving your hands in the what? air. What? Come to think of it, that was probably a little much, but everyone bought it, so... Phew. Phew. And then later you become king. And check it. Your economic policies are both wise and fair, and your country becomes way prosperous. Due to economics not being a zero-sum game, Killing you not it. only make the lives of your subjects better, but you actually improve the lives of those they trade with, too. Hamlet, you've literally made the world a better place. Nice. Nice. And all you had to do was kill a human being. The end. <laughs> yeah. P.S. Oh, I meant to mention it sooner, but one day you step on a butterfly that has the cascade effect of preventing not one, but two worldwide Let's wars. Let's go, two worldwide wars. So, good job all around, I'd say. Keep on killing everyone who interferes with your preferred version of history, I'd say. Congratulations. You were really terrific at being Hamlet. Nice. The end. For real this time. For real this time. Got him. Oh, is that my story? What? <laughs> yep, that's how I did it. I even put a mask on. Nice. The Hamlometer. Oh, what do I got? What do I got? What do I got? Wild thing, hot stuff. Who to be? Eh, cold fish. I mean, I like sushi, but I don't know about being compared to a cold fish. Game over. Your stats to this adventure. Poison's misused, one. Oh yeah, in the ear, right? Choices made, 17. Times you were, one. Times you were not, zero. Rosencrantz's, one. Guildenstern's, one. You created a better story than Shakespeare. Why not use your limitless power to go on an all new adventure? Show me the credits. Do 
do do do do to be credited with William Shakespeare what an honor and of course with the fabulous Ryan North well I think that is gonna do it for our first look at to be or not to be what an adventure it was and I really enjoyed that narration I think it would have been just as enjoyable uh, if I were reading it but that sarcasm was just the cherry on top the icing on the cake let me know what you thought about one small playthrough through to be or not to be what choices would have you would you have done differently and um, maybe I'm gonna go back and be Ophelia next time or I can just be ghost dad and uh, convince my son to kill my brother who is now sleeping with my wife but I'll save that for next time on my own hope you all had a great time and hope you stay safe stay healthy stay sane stay playing indies again this was to be or not to be six dollars 99 cents on the North American eShop rated T14 published and developed by Tin Man Games y'all have a great night bye